Welcome to our second virtual field trip of the semester. In this trip, we're going to visit Radford Company Acme Panel. Acme manufactures structural insulated panels out of a variety of different materials, and they are going to give us a tour of their operations today. Leading our tour will be Sam Fortier, the project design coordinator for the company. We'll also hear from Kevin DiPietro, the Chief Operating Officer. During the tour, we'll see the various steps of the process of panel fabrication. We'll also get to actually witness a tensile test to test for the quality assurance of the glue. And I'll point you to an external video that shows other kinds of testing that you can do on structural panels. We'll see some of the tools of the trade that Acme uses to customize panels in-house. And many of these tools are also used on the job site if there need to be modifications to the panels. In many cases, though, the panels can be customized, shipped to the site, and assembled very simply. And we'll see some examples of projects that were done with these panels. Finally, Acme as a company is well known for its efforts in environmental and social responsibility, and we'll see some examples of what that looks like, including partnerships with Virginia Tech. So let's get started. Part one, the process of panel fabrication. We take these foam blocks and then we can see the glue machine. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll slowly go through and that applies a layer of glue on both sides. So before they actually go into the press, we'll measure and make sure that the glue is an appropriate amount for both sides and not too much or not too little. When you come through at the end of it, you can see it's a water activated glue. So basically this is a moisture spray on both sides that sprays on the foam. Then we'll take it over, and we're taking it over, uh, these are the final scrap pieces to make this uh, larger panel. We have those four panels there that we're going to pull the OSB over for. And basically when they're done with that, uh, they're going to slide it back into the press. You can see when the guys move the OSB over and when they put the foam up against um, the larger pieces of foam behind it. They check to make sure everything's square against the uh, racking system. So there's one on the back side of it and one on the corner to make sure that everything comes in, in line. We'll cut the foam size. Mm -hmm. the pen. Uh, up to 16 feet is the size we can get the foam blocks in. Anything more than that, we'll have to cut down. So for a 24 foot panel or an 18 foot panel, we'll have to use a 16 foot piece and a 2 foot piece beside it to fit mm -hmm. in. And because it's the OSB that acts as most of the structural integrity for the panel, uh, the break in the foam doesn't really change uh, the integrity of the panel at all. You can also see in the middle of the panels, it right. almost looks like there's two panels in it. It's a singular panel, but there's a break in the foam because of the four foot distance and the four foot size of foam that you see in front of you. Okay. Um, and in that one, you can actually see on the end there, there's a small hole. That small hole is a wire chase. Mm -hmm. um, and we preemptively route that out of the panels so that the electrical can be run through and they can pull through. And uh, hopefully on site, they want to pull electrical. Cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's the. The water activation. So that applied on both the top and the bottom at the same time? It does, yes. Yeah. It's yeah. harder to see them on the bottom, but there's a, basically four sprayers on the top and four on the bottom. Now we can set it. We can set the glue machine to do just one side, mm -hmm. like a single sided panel. Um, but yeah, basic process for the glue machine is that we will, you know, load up both of the top and bottom layers um, with a pool of glue, which will coat the rollers. So that's applied, and then we measure it to make sure it's, you know, the correct amount, and then we'll start running the presses through. Hmm. And we have about 15 minutes or so to get everything loaded and uh, arranged in the panel press. And so we'll load everything up and move it over to the larger press that you see there. Mm -hmm. the fourth. But really, you're building, you're building a wall of house with three guys and 
three minutes, right? <laughs> sort of. Maybe not three minutes, but yeah, we, we try and be well, pretty quick about it. At least to assemble it, yeah. And then it ha now tell me again how long it takes to cure. So it starts to cure in you know a shorter time frame, but we have it in the press for roughly about an hour. Okay. Um, so the amount of pressure changes on the panel, um, but anywhere from you know 700 to 1200 psi for the panels. And uh, once this is in, you can actually see the bottom pull the panels up. Um, okay. Yeah, so these are all hydraulic presses, mm -hmm. which are uh, pretty accurate, which is nice. And that one makes 24 by 8, you said? Yep, up to 24 by 8. So those so are obviously really? a little bit smaller, but um, yeah, we can make anywhere up to 8 by 24s. Really an entire wall. Yeah, you could. That's you could pretty actually impressive. Lay, them down, lay them down on their side and use it as an entire wall. Um, we've also done it, you know, f for taller walls as well, doing a full 8x24 up to gable peaks and things like that. Mm. So, yeah, it worked pretty well. That's pretty much done. You can see, uh, if you look at the bottom there, these are all pushed up. Mm -hmm. So it's pushing the panels up against the top, which are uh, basically bolted into place. Oh, right. And that's how the PSI is applied. Mm -hmm. So these systems behind you are a little bit different, where um, the tops can be adjusted. So mm -hmm. they're on a pulley system where we can move those up and down. Then we take out that middle plate that's the gray kind of metal bar in the middle. Mm -hmm. That's what we'll arrange the panels on so that we can move it both up against the, the racking system and back into place and then adjust the top down onto it to put pressure on. And on. Cool. Yeah. With the forklift, right? You can yeah, move yeah. around. We couldn't move them by hand. <laughs> yeah. Not a stack of them anyway. Yeah. Um, but it's nice, actually. The smaller panels, you can move by hand on the job site, right? The 4x8s, yeah, they so weigh about... Probably 4 by 8s up to about 4 by 16 mm -hmm. um, You can move on the job site. And um, it's relatively easy. Probably two guys could do it pretty easily. And as you see, we have these four presses. So we can make uh, 4 by panels a lot faster than we could with 8 by panels. I will be showing some pictures of the house that you guys did for me. Oh, okay. Before you had the big press, they were yeah. they were four by. I guess yeah. the larger ones were four by sixteen, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was nice. Yeah, and basically, a crew of three guys unloaded them on the back of the truck and just put them up. There was no crane until you got to the roof. Yeah, it's pretty nice. There are a lot of sites that you know it's harder to get a crane on site. It's mm -hmm. also expensive. You know, cranes are pretty expensive. Yeah. So trying to use a lull or a forklift, or we even have people use tractors. You know, on site, mm -hmm. uh, putting things into place. So it does work pretty well for smaller panels. That's cool. That is cool. The pressure hasn't been activated on that second part of it. So what that means is that these guys are going to make a second stack of panels and push them in and, and then use the hydraulics to... That's pretty cool. So you can yeah. do half at a time. I like that. It's nice. Yeah. So you, we have a little bit more flexibility on time. Uh, the first ones, because there's uh, only so much time to get them in the press, you know, we have to do it quickly. And if the guys needed to clean up the glue machine or finish out a project, they could come back at a later time. Mm -hmm. so, do you know what... It, so that's an 8 by 8 that one's probably an 8x10, maybe an 8x12. Okay. okay. And it's, um, do you have any guesses what the panel itself would weigh? What it would weigh? Uh, that's about a 6.5. A 6.5, okay. Yeah. Um, so the panels, if a full 8x24 is 750 pounds, you're looking at 325, roughly. Okay. Or something that size. So, you know, if you have four guys, you might be able to each pick up a corner mm -hmm. in place. But otherwise, you would want some sort of forklift or something to brace so that when you pull it up, you know, you don't mm -hmm. have as much work on site. Okay. Uh, so we do okay. a lot of walls and a lot of roof. Occasionally, we'll do a floor, depending on kind of what the system is. Uh, the panels are pretty strong. You know, they can span 8 to 10 to 12 feet pretty easily. Mm -hmm. But floor loads are stronger. Or it requires uh, heavier loading for a floor than mm -hmm. a roof does, and sometimes more than a wall does. And what that means is that there are shorter distances it can span. The span so yeah. we can do a 10-foot uh, span on the floor mm -hmm. pretty easily, but if you had a 20-foot floor, you'd have to have some boarding beams beneath the house to uh, carry it. We have seen some small construction or peered construction mm -hmm. on the coast that use uh, panel floors underneath beams. And we've done that with some of our smaller student build projects like the Panther House or 
yeah. little little tiny shed kinds of things, you know, where it's not yeah. so important to a lot of tiny have a lot of rigidity. Done, I want to say half a dozen of them that use uh, panels for floors, walls, and roof, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty interesting. You know, tiny houses don't really have any regulations. Like panels, both because of the insulative properties, but also just because they're a little bit stronger mm -hmm. put together better. Cool. Yeah. So in terms of strength, you know, the wall panels and the horizontal uh, axis are about three and a half times as strong as a standard two by four house. And you can kind of imagine that uh, as an equivalent of a shear wall. Mm -hmm. The panels act as shear wall throughout the entire house. Mm -hmm. Whereas most houses are built, you know, if they're built along a coast, maybe the wall just by the exterior facing the coast is built with a couple of uh, layers of sheathing like this. Um, so the difference is that all of these panels have that sheathing and have that additional protection. Um, vertical loading is maybe one, one and a half times as strong mm -hmm. as the two by four or two by six wall. But they do do well. In both earthquakes and um, we see a lot more of kind of hurricanes and tornado damage. So. Nice. So they have strength advantages from a performance standpoint. The materials themselves maybe cost a little more, but the construction time is a lot more efficient, right? It is, yeah. So if the total construction materials are maybe 5 to 10% more than the stick framing, insulation, uh, lumber materials, that kind of cost, mm -hmm. um, for the total installation time of the house is probably a third to half the time to install. Um, so in a house that's, you know, maybe a 2,400 square foot house, um, I think the studies that have most recently been done said that saves about 130 hours of labor install time. Wow. Which is, you know, that's a few weeks, at least. Um, mm -hmm. so that does a pretty good job there. Um, in terms of cost savings, we think most of the savings will come from the efficiency of the house. So that means yeah, that total, um, yes. it's the total efficiency of people like saving heat, heat, saving electricity, and those utility costs. Um, there's a little bit to be said about green equity as well. More people mm -hmm. are realizing that a you know, greenhouse means lower bills down the road. Yeah. So there's a bit better of a cost, and that still hasn't come around fully with some of the uh, realtors and people making assessments of homes. But there are some, like there's a few in North Carolina, there are a few in Virginia, um, who will take a look at houses and value green products a little bit better, especially if it has certain ratings, you know, if it meets the National Green Building Codes, or if it meets um, the Energy Star Efficiency, or LEED Efficiency, or especially Passive House, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, people will take a look at those and understand the value a little bit better now than, say, 15, 20 years ago. Oh, I'm trying to think of the resilience rating system for storms and things like that. Do you know what it's called? The high velocity hurricane zone uh -huh. testing. So that's very specific. That's usually only in maybe areas really close to the coast like Miami, Miami Gate. Mm -hmm. um, and that's above I think 160 or 180 miles per hour. And it has some impact testing too, which is like mm -hmm. there's a two by fly through it. You know, exactly. Like um, most testing is wind zone testing. And for most areas around the coast here, it's below 120 to 140 miles per hour. Panels themselves do really well, and they can be built without tie downs up to about 140, 145 miles an hour, depending on the house and depending on you know how close is it to the water, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, but that's a pretty high wind zone. We've engineered panels with additional materials and tie downs uh, to reach up to 200 miles an hour in certain areas. Like we had one on the Virgin Islands, for example, wow. uh, that was, they got up to 200 miles an hour for their engineering. Mm -hmm. um, now that wasn't required for the local zone. I think the local code was 180, but this homeowner really wanted you know, that additional effort there.